Hello and welcome to another episode of the Outlier Marketing Show. I am your host, Praveen Shekhar, an outlier marketer myself. Today, we have a very interesting person to talk about leadership. Sheep is what happens when you and I just follow the herd. It is the need of leadership today to think, act, and be different. And who else than our own leadership whisperer to come and talk to us about the need for parity and the need for differentiation. Sudhir Rao is our guest and he coaches middle management for leadership, an absolutely, absolutely important step necessary today to get the next level ready. Sudhir has 26 years of experience across three continents. Well, wanting to be an astrophysicist, destiny led him otherwise and he aimed for the stars and today he is with us. So we have to thank destiny for that. While his family is the center of his universe, Sudhir loves sports, functional fitness, reading, writing, music, and travel. And for uh, those of you who want to know more about Sudhir, he's also an author. Along with a few other authors, they have come up with an anthology of short stories called Filter Coffee Chronicles. How down south can you get? Welcome, Sudhir, to our discussion on leadership. Thank you very much, Praveen. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here. Thank you for having me. Beautiful. You are the leadership whisperer, and today's talk is about leadership, differentiation in leadership thinking. What are your thoughts on the theme, Sudhir? Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw a question right back at you. <laughs> yes, I like, yes. I love asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, in your view, Praveen, what do you think leadership is? Is it a position, an attribute, or both? It is a thought. It is a thought converted into explicit action towards that thought. So basically translating it. And if I really want to do something and I take effective steps towards it, to me, that is leadership, not defined by others, but for myself. So if I get you right, what you're saying is, as a thought, anybody can have it, right? Yes. Yeah, well, this wasn't the case about a hundred years ago. Absolutely. Right. And, and the world has changed. The world has changed so much that everybody can't know everything. Which means leadership can exist in everybody. But we, we are sheep in a way. We love our comfort. Right? We love to go in a specific direction. We want approval from the society around us. Right. So there is a, a need for us to break those shackles and there is, and and that comes out of you know taking a different view and, and let me quote something right if you look at yes. coach carter uh, if you watch the movie he asks a very significant question which gets answered later in the movie and this question is what is our deepest fear and the answer when it comes out and it took me by surprise i would advise people to watch it if you've not watched it and our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. It's that we are powerful beyond measure. <laughs> it is not the darkness, but the light that frightens us. Even meant to shine as children. Everybody is. And, and that is a philosophy behind leadership. Look at the jugad in the world around us. If that's not leadership, what is? <laughs> Well, to me, Sudhir, leadership is synonymous with your moniker, leadership whisperer. The older tradition is a leader has to be loud and bold and lead from the front. Well, today, from what you have said, it is enough if you whisper. Is my understanding correct? Is that why you call yourself the leadership whisperer, Sudhir? Uh, it, it, is, it is in a way. Uh, most of the, the greatest leaders, uh, I'm not saying I'm a leader. I, I'm a leadership Whisperer, so I, I won't call myself a leader, but then most of the of the leaders, the great leaders are whisperers, they stand back uh, and, and let other people take center stage. And it takes a great deal to do that, to let things go. Oh, to, to me, uh, the prime example of that is Dhoni. And you, 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 he wins that and then he vanishes letting all the other people take on the accolades and the, uh, uh, the attention. Absolutely. I mean, Tony is a prime example of someone who, who does that. And 
that's a tough choice to make for for leaders and and the real leaders do make that choice yeah. now talking about uh, um examples in your close to three decades of career have you seen any example or read any book or a movie in that case where uh, there are leaders who have exemplified different thinking and different action uh that's a great question uh yes i mean i mean if you i'm, I'm going to go back all the way uh to the to the start of my uh, career when cognizant and i worked at cognizant when cognizant was in the y2k business I and mean, everybody was in the y2k business uh, but if you look at it most of the other organizations faded away and there were a select few that continued right and cognizant was one of the nuvo companies to actually succeed and, and the reason they succeeded was the leadership that came into the picture and and they said and very simply put they said you know what we have taken care of your core for y2k all these years we know your business now why don't you let us take care of it and and what a brilliant change that was it, it changed the world around right um the other one and this comes from a movie um and, and this movie is again worth watching there are so many movies i could just keep talking about them i'll, I'll talk about this one briefly we were soldiers uh, a mel gibson accent that it's based on a true story and one of the things he says actually um, gave me goosebumps he said i will be the first on the ground in the war zone and i'll be the last to to get off and we will leave no one behind dead or alive mm-hmm. so uh, that was that really when he said that it was just amazing uh, uh, there are more examples i will hold them back and we'll oh, talk sure, about sure, sure. now you have traveled and worked across three continents is mm-hmm. the definition of leadership different is uh, uh, are there cultural connotations that we will have to, or cultural corrections as i would call it uh what is your view about it different continents different cultures where does leadership thinking and differentiated thinking come into play so uh leadership on the whole is very similar across the world and yet as you rightly said it has its local connotations and a leader sitting say in the west say in the uk or north america uh if he thinks by virtue of his or her world they know what is happening in an india or a singapore or japan uh, that's a recipe for disaster right um, and let's say let me give you a very simple example and let's say i'm working with a client uh, in france and this actually happened really and we had an invoice that needed to be sent to the customer uh, and who else to translate it but google right <laughs> so google transport uh, google i'm sorry i said transport it says it transported me there translate so we we run it through google translate into french now the lucky part was that we had a frenchman actually reviewing it and so we had sow number now you and i know its statement of work number but google doesn't know that so sow for google was female pig <laughs> and so i translated that to twee twee in french is female pig and imagine a customer getting a, a document this is female pig number and uh, i don't know what would happen and ship to became boat to because ship is a boat so bateau uh, and, and there were just these are small examples but culturally there are differences it's not just culturally there are labor laws that differ to and and someone who doesn't know that you call someone after 6 o'clock in germany you get uh, you get fined for it or uh, you try to get people to work in france on the weekend without giving advance notice to the uh, town authorities the company gets fine and think for it so these are all small things that leaders do need to understand and live with good now i am the ceo of a company i am on the chair of a couple of other companies and uh, this is a question specific to your coaching especially the middle management folks to become leaders there are only two types of people that i encounter and so do all the other ceos i work with order takers and initiator takers but all of them by virtue of the experience want to be promoted as leaders 
how can is there a solution can we solve this conundrum what can i do as a ceo to ensure the middle management gets ready that's a brilliant question and that's a question that faced satya uh, nadella when he took over microsoft right uh, we we had this come to us from another organization but but i'll tell you what that organization did let's talk about what satya did uh, when satya took over microsoft uh, people were typically order takers they were uh, working on the basis of the past and nobody was thinking about the future and so microsoft was actually going down even though by in terms of revenue and profitability they were up there but he realized that he needed to tap into the creativity of people but nobody is going to open up if uh, you don't give them the license to do so but how do you do that so this got, this has got to start from the top so he started with asking people open ended questions he didn't say you didn't do this he says can you think of something how can we do this better and this is a coaching model and to go from a model where someone dictates terms to a coaching model takes a huge mindset shift and that's why coaches come in to help make you know the people shift from that position to this they don't tell people how to do it but they play it in action and it took 2 years for for satya to do this and that's why microsoft is where it is today now what happened with uh, one of uh, the prospects who came to us and they they asked us the same question said we want a manager as a coach program and and i work with um, in, in these programs where we do work for corporate i work with a boutique company called coin beta consulting there are a few of us three or four of us and we do some very high end stuff at least we we call it high end right and uh, they asked us for that and and we came up with the program but when we came up with the program we had a condition it's all good to to have a manager as a coach but unless the senior management gets involved it's not going to work in that okay let's say you you are not going to the manager as a coach program that's that's fine but when people make that shift from giving instructions to asking open ended questions they're going to make mistakes they're going to be challenges right now we want them to go through completely the leadership will have to be really open about it forgiving about it uh, and and take you know encourage people to make that shift but if they can't do that if, if they're going to ding that person then they will go back to you know the, the way they operated and and this company came back and said oh you're making it too complicated and we can't do this and we said that's fine if if you don't want to do this we can't do this either so that's the difference that is the difference in satya and and this if you, so if you want to make that change you want to get people to open up we've got to give people the confidence that they can open up without fear of being hit beautiful now the, the next question that i have and i'm relating what i'm doing with what you're doing though the the uh, common thread is very similar i encourage people through outlier marketing to think differently and go ahead and try something else on the marketing front mm -hmm. it is like pushing a stone up a slope at any point uh, if we don't wedge it enough it just falls right back in mm -hmm. your line of work especially when you're working with the middle managers you come in do your act pump them up and leave there is a spike that holds on for a month or two and then the exactly the answer you gave previously the roll back starts happening where the bad habits you you kind of you know uh, fall back into them so when you go and get the leaders mid managers to think act and be different how do you ensure continuity that they continue to push themselves of course the top management has a key part of it in terms of enabling them to make some mistakes and learn but my question to you is you are also asked by your clients to take this big rock and make them think but then push it over a certain threshold limit after which you don't you're not required how do you handle it okay uh, that's a great question because uh, we've all been through that at least i have been through that right i've been in a position where um, i i had my blinkers on i would do my work i do it a certain way and say this is the only way we know how to do it right so there is there is no other way have you been there 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, so when when we act when we uh, work with with people, we, we would love to have this um, kind of a project where we work with people for one year. But that's not practical. It's not going to happen. We all know it's not going to happen. Um, and working with them for two days and walking away is also a, a, a challenge. So we hit middle ground, and we did it with uh, with Mind Tree. Actually, uh, we hit middle ground with them. Uh, we we were working on two aspects of uh, people see wherever people face challenges one is they face challenges in terms of connecting with others we've all done that right i i don't like that person you may not like this person but as a leader we may may have to create that relationship that's that's one so stakeholder management at different levels is is one thing to work on one area to work on and the second is who am i what kind of person am i how do i think we all have our biases do we right. know our blind spots so that's the second part and then the third part is health mental health physical health emotional and empathy right now we we, we got to cover all three of these areas but how we do it is we work with them for the first part say stakeholder management we work with them um, and look at ways to create trust and then we say go back implement it right and and we talk about having coaches on the ground with with mind tree they put their senior people on they were a fantastic organization when we worked with them in 2019 2018 and 2019 they put two of the senior people uh, three of the senior people into each batch that we worked with and they became coaches because they understood our language they knew what we were doing and they brought their experience and their coaching was fantastic when they come back they talk about what they have achieved and then we go into the next part of it which is who am i right and decision making and then we do it and the last part is at a two and a half months they present it back to us wow lovely we have one question here from swati maya in one word is it a person who helps an individual to ignite the inbuilt fire and glow themselves in one word and i'm going to repeat it is it a person who helps an individual ignite the inbuilt fire and glow themselves um swati the question is unclear to me is it uh, an external person or internal person so i'm um, re-paraphrasing the question for sudhir who lights the fire is it from within or outside sudhir you are you are putting me in a spot here <laughs> <laughs> more like uh, you can lead the horse to the water kind of a question <laughs> yeah. typically um, you, if you want a, an answer where people really aren't being ignited then yes it is a person someone who can uh, ignite it otherwise why would people not do it and and that person creates an environment which causes look and and i and go back to the example of satya nadella look at how satya nadella did it dan price dan price did it when he when he slashed 94% of his salary and and got his team to up their base salary by to $70,000 they bought him a tesla <laughs> <laughs> and of course they have worked for a company too or bob chatman single person when he was asked to fire people he went back and talked to the organization to the employees and said are you ready to take a cut everybody one month they wanted to save 10 million everybody took a cut they saved 20 million so yes if people aren't wow really making any other change then one person can make a difference it's just how they think which is pretty much answer, swati you you, uh, you answered me for sure one person can make a difference which is pretty much what gandhi quoted as well now one question for you here because the last 15 16 months has been crazy out there um, everywhere but also inside companies uh, and specific to leadership mm mm-hmm. what have been your experiences specifically in terms of leadership changes and the way they have thought and acted differently 
Um, the examples you quoted were all good, but are there anything else that comes to your mind? Any other examples of uh, leadership in action in the last 15, 16 months? I'll tell you one of, uh, one of the uh, organizations that we work with, and they, they were coaching their uh, senior leadership, the, the head of India and the next level. But I must admit that they made these changes absolutely on their own. Um, they, they knew that people were working uh, at, at different sites and so they went ahead uh, and they gave them the option to continue working or not. That's one. Then they, they said, you know what, if you, if you continue working off-site, we will give you, uh, we will pay for two times a year for you to come into the office and work with us. Um, and if uh, they, they had you know, events that they created, but these are very casual events to, to have them interact, no games, nothing. I mean, people just didn't want games. They're tired of games. Uh, but they said casual events, catch up over dinner virtually. Uh, but most important of all, and this is where I've seen a, a big challenge with a lot of organizations uh, is if, if people keep looking over their shoulder and having a lot of meetings, they start burning out. So the ability to let go, uh, which is, and this is kind of counterintuitive, but lose control to gain control is very important. Give them the, uh, give them the outcome, delegate, and let them do the work. Let them be on their own. It's okay. And some of these organizations have really done the fantastic. And this one in particular said, Friday, no meetings. <laughs> no calls, right? Just be on your own. So the one, giving people the freedom to function uh, and, and two, taking care of them, of their wellness, of their family. They were writing to their family, taking care of them. So there was, there was some, and I'm speaking specifically about the COVID situation. And, and this is something, that is a, this is a conversation we had last week. Amazing work that they've done. Uh, in continuation to that question, let's look at 2022, Sudhir, when it is still going to be hybrid. Right. We don't know what's going to happen, but I'm presuming things will be back to, to relative normalcy. And mm -hmm. that is going to be a hybrid model continuing. Do mm -hmm. you think that is going to impact leadership thinking? Uh, so leadership thinking is leadership thinking. I don't think it's going to impact it uh, that much, uh, except that we, when we talk about leadership and we're going back to the definition of leadership that we use, that this is a thought that we have. If the person has a thought, if the person has an initiative, the person thinks differently, they can tackle pretty much any situation. So when, when there are, you know, in 2022, when they are working differently, whether it is stakeholder management, which will be a little more difficult doing it virtually, but that's got to be done. Uh, employees, Everyone talks about employees. Everyone talks about uh, clients. No one talks about the boss. <laughs> I, I see this on LinkedIn and it says we all left because of the boss. Yeah, maybe you did. But the question is, did you understand what the boss was going through? I learned that the hard way myself, uh, Praveen. Mm -hmm. I, I actually misunderstood one of my bosses. It took me four years to figure out that the boss may have had a point of view that I didn't realize. We all have our biases. So that's... I, I hope I hope you're not talking about you're the, the boss in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are trying to get me into trouble, aren't you? <laughs> well, well said, well said. Uh, there is one question here from Ravi Chandar Venkatram, and I'm going to read it out. Sure, we find many educated domain experts, political leaders, business folks living in a perennial sense of fear, which does affect them and folks around them in a lighter but serious way in husbands and wives as well. Your thoughts, gentlemen, more on mitigation as fear, wise people say, is the biggest uh, killer. So fear mitigation for leadership is the question from Ravichandar Venkatram. What can, if I may ask Ravi, what, what kind of uh, fear are you speaking about? Is this personal, professional? Can you be a little more specific? Right. While he answers, let me... Um, give an option here. This is more a fear of what could happen, a speculative fear, 
which um, and this is of course my interpretation of that sudhir uh, in terms of uh, how if you don't conquer fear then the fear conquers you and then we pretty much are in a leadership downward spiral so uh, given this context what would your answer be sudhir or response um this, this is going to sound cliche uh but if if we don't want to be afraid one we got a lot of money so you don't have to be afraid at all you can retire from from life um or uh, we really have to work on the area where we are seen to be unique people want us so this is a case of are we uh, skilled in some some space which is unique special niche and two and which is very different two is there a need for that skill in the marketplace no i'm saying you know i'm talking about both of them and then this there's uh, i i'm glad you asked this question ravi because a lot of people struggle with learning learning to learn they come into programs they sit sit down go through it and walk away not realizing that they could gain so much that could take uh, take them up this again this this relates to the the sheep question that uh, praveen brought up are you ready to learn to learn when do we actually learn in in our school days when we had exams what is driving us to learn today if that fear is there and desperation is there then learning will be there so transform yourself from a, from sheep to a wolf beautiful uh, another question here from rangarajan shrinivasan what is your leadership style i know there would be many and based on situations we need to adapt but what is the best style if any sudhir the personally my leadership style is um, to to let people take uh, the front seat and driver seat and, and and i did it with my team before i left cognizant um, and and believe me they did much better than i could have done if i had taken the decisions right uh but let me take a step back there leadership is not about hierarchy it is about accountability so those decisions were taken by me and sometimes it is a, a tough one because I, i may have to take unpopular decisions which is actually good for the majority of of the people um i i try to do that it's a very difficult thing to take an unpopular decision but as a as a leader i i wouldn't have to do that but i believe in people you give them enough uh, room you enable them and they will deliver i've seen it time and again i saw it with one of my teams um and and if if i have a minute uh, praveen i i'll give an example of how this yes, happened uh back in 2009 uh, we had actually uh, one a big big deal uh, with a large fnb company and we were trying to get our handheld testing all the walkie talkies and uh, mobiles and so on testing to india now uh, no one had done that before successfully they had two other partners had tried it they had failed so when the team leader came to me and said hey so if you would like to try it um, i said you know tell me what you need and go ahead i i'll support you all the way believe it or not in one month they achieved the impossible and we are talking about team leads we're not talking about architects we're not talking about you know high end guys these are there's a team lead and this team uh, his name is sanjeev uh, and and uh, we are still in touch but amazing team that that really did it uh, so dear by you trying to change the thought process of the middle management you are automatically unpopular so therefore you have to talk <laughs> the way through uh, one last question i do see a lot of books behind you uh, and i presume that is a source of inspiration can you leave a, one or two books that you would recommend for all the viewers out here uh, praveen i am an indian we always take extra answer sheets <laughs> <laughs> but because you said one or two i will stop with three but I, can i start with filter coffee chronicles yes absolutely shamelessly <laughs> yeah shamelessly that's a book that six of us wrote short stories guys please read it uh, and and tell us how you find it on a serious note with uh, with, with the question that you asked 
the first book and there are so many beautiful books uh, and without um, without what's the right word for that without inserting the other authors the first book that i would talk about is uh, david and goliath malcolm gladwell right it's a beautiful book because it talks about how underdogs achieve success and that's it and that's where it shows that each one of us has a light within and if we only let it shine we can achieve quite a bit the second one that i really loved uh, is marshall goldsmith what got you here won't get you there and and for people who are um, who may not want to read the book he has converted that into a series of videos beautiful videos 3 minute 4 minute videos that you can watch uh, on on the uh, on youtube and the third one that i really loved reading is uh, prakash ayer's the secret of leadership yes yeah it's a beautiful book so these are three that oh I'm lovely apart from the two movies that you have said i think we need to have a separate conversation i know vina is in the audience as well i think the three of us will need to talk about uh, movies and marketing and leadership so there it's been great uh, having you on the show uh, thank you very much and i look forward to continue our collaboration for all the viewers welcome to the outlier marketing show thank you sudhir and thank all of you once again thank you so much for having you i enjoyed answering those questions for me uh, amazing and thank you Uh, to Ravi and uh, Maya for asking this question. I hope I got your names right, uh, and and I apologize if I didn't. But uh, thank you for being there.